NVIDIA is really the hardware phase of the AI revolution, uh, and they are building some software, but they, they historically have been a hardware company. If this revolution is as big as we think it is, uh, then we should see those GPUs being put to good work. And I just gave you a good example. Um, autonomous technology is going to transform transportation of all kinds, not just cars, but trucks and drones. We're, we're going to see uh, deliveries by drone uh, in the future. It's all the same convergence and it's all catalyzed by AI. The longer it takes to happen, uh, then the further ahead of itself NVIDIA might become. Uh, so we shall see. Okay, further ahead of itself. There are questions in the market after the rally we've seen. We continue to set new highs on the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. Tech being a big part of that. People start thinking, have I seen this before? Have I seen the dot-com era in my own you know, experience? And is it happening again? What, what, what are we thinking of here in terms of when people throw out phrases like reversion to mean? Uh, well, uh, this is not like the tech and telecom bubble. The companies uh, that are at the top of the indexes and driving them are very, very profitable companies and very well established companies. Uh, so very different. Um, if there's any time we're comparing uh, this to, it actually is the 1930s. Now that might sound surprising because uh, that was the depression, but uh, if you looked at the concentration in the market in the early days of the depression, you know, it was uh, back then the unemployment rate was up to 25%, GDP dropped by 30%. So there was this question, are companies going to survive or not? And it was binary. And so you had massive concentration towards a few names. AT&T was at the top of the list. Telephony was just making its way uh, into the global economy. Uh, and so, um, that concentration. What happened after that? What happened after that is we went into a, a strong bull market. It broadened out and smaller cap stocks, they could be large, just not mega cap, large, mid, small. Um, they way outperformed the mega cap stocks. And if interest rates come down, as we believe they will, we believe that will be the catalyst towards uh, broadening this market out. That's interesting. Let's talk a bit about interest rates because obviously we're going to get an inflation print as we get those. You try to figure out where Jerome Powell and the, and the Federal Reserve's head may be. Jerome Powell this week seemed to be suggesting, listen, we're, we're cognizant of the fact that if we keep rates too high for too long, we could hurt the economy. Seems like the, the door's opening wide. If we do see a cut this fall, maybe two before the end of the year from the Fed, depending if the market's right, what, what happens here for some of these tech stocks? Because there's already been a pretty significant run. Yes, but the run has been very concentrated. We do believe the market will broaden out. Uh, and that is how we've positioned our strategies. We're a very differentiated exposure to AI uh, than the MAG-6. Uh, I guess MAG-7. I know she said include. 6. So I guess it's Tesla back well, in the they, group now they, after the run they've had. They bumped yeah. Tesla out last year, yeah. but now Tesla's performed this year or is performing. And uh, so I think they might invite it back, back in. in it is the largest AI project in the world. And uh, even NVIDIA on its calls uh, these days is saying that the auto sector is probably one of the biggest uh, beneficiaries uh, uh, and movers and shakers in the AI in the AI space. We think that's going to be very concentrated to just a few winners in a winner take most uh, strategy. Uh, so yes, we do think with interest rates coming down, the market will broaden out and uh, benefit the AI beneficiaries that we have in our portfolio. Many people are very surprised uh, to see as much in the healthcare realm in uh, the flagship strategy. And we do believe that AI is going to help uh, when converged with sequencing technologies and gene editing, uh, that we're actually talking about curing diseases, uh, not treating symptoms, but curing diseases. That's, I can't think of a more profound application uh, of AI. And uh, so we have as much in the multi-omic space, which is what we call it, uh, as we do in pure play technology as measured by GICs.
Interesting stuff there. If we're talking about, you know, inflation being tamed, central banks delivering cuts. Our central bank already delivered one. We're yes. waiting for another one later this yes. month. Uh, people worry that inflation will be reignited. I think you think you have more of a view of a deflationary environment being more likely. Yes. Um Yes, in fact, uh, 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 we see two ways that's going to happen. It's already happening. If you listen to quarterly earnings reports, you listen to Walmart, Target, Costco, Best Buy, uh, you listen to Starbucks and Wendy's and um, McDonald's, they're all cutting prices because the consumer is under great pressure and it is the middle income consumer now that is capitulating. Uh, and looking for these deals. So that's a cyclical phenomenon. Um, and that's outright prices coming down, uh, which rarely happens when you think about it, right? Uh, the second source of deflation is technologically enabled. Uh, so the five innovation platforms that I mentioned, all of them follow learning curves, uh, which are expressed in, in uh, cost declines and, and then price declines. Uh, and uh, the five platforms are highly deflationary, but it's good deflation. As costs and prices come down, these new technologies will scale across more and more sectors and become mass market opportunities. So these price declines are associated with booming growth. Uh, so yes, we think on two fronts, cyclical and secular, there are deflationary forces and that the surprises uh, in the next few years are going to be on the low side of both inflation and interest rates. There are two, two questions in there, and uh, well, there are more than that, but, but I'm just gonna, uh, the, uh, uh, there's, the, there's the question of, of um, uh, the ethics of artificial intelligence, and then there's the, uh, the ethical use of artificial intelligence, and I think the two are related, not exactly the same. Uh, you, with respect to, to the use of AI for students, I would encourage you to engage AI and use it um, as much as you can. And now, I know that I know that they're, they're casual listeners who just heard what I said and they think, oh my gosh, you just use AI, you're gonna, all the problems are gonna be solved, all your homework is gonna be done. Uh, it's, it's, not, it's not anything like that. This is not anything like uh, this is no different like, no different than uh, if I gave you a partner who to work with you, to collaborate with you to solve a problem, you still need to know how to collaborate. You need to know how to prompt, how to frame a problem, how to refine the solution, how to iterate on it, how to change your mind. Um, oftentimes when you interact with somebody, uh, what you prompt initially, Mm, it, it wasn't exactly quite right, but based on the response, it might refine your next prompt, which then, you know, so on and so forth, you, you iterate, you collaborate. Uh, you also know that AI is far from um, the, the, the hope of what it can do someday. The technology is, is, in, is incredible, um, but it's far from being complete. And there are many things that it doesn't do very well. And so you have to guide it along. It's no different than when you work with uh, teammates and, and uh, lab partners. Uh, you're guiding each other along because you know each other's weaknesses and strengths. And some, you know, you divide a task based on what, what each, each one of you are good at. And you, you would do the same, th same thing with AI. There are parts of it where, where you might formulate the, the, uh, the prompt a little bit more precisely. You might even give it, you know, a sequence of, of prompts, a chain of thoughts um, that would guide the AI to come back with a better answer. Uh, and so there's a lot of either iteration or guiding or prompting or prompting becomes the new programming. Um, uh, you know, when you're collaborating with some, somebody, aren't you really programming each other? You're prompt programming each other. Isn't that right? And so uh, whenever you learn how to work with somebody new, you have to you know, learn how to pro program them, how to, how to collaborate with them. And so you have to do the same with, with AI. And for every single domain of applications, you've got to change it a little bit. And, and so there, you know, there's not, learning how to use AI is a great skill in itself. 
It's another way of saying, learning how to collaborate with people is a deep skill in itself. There's, that's why there are some people who are super great at collaborating with others, and there's some people who are just not very good at it. Because it takes skill, right? And so this is no different. You now have a new teammate, and this teammate just happens to be a computer. And, and so I would, I would highly recommend, highly recommend all young people, um, uh, learn all the different ways that, that uh, you can program and guide and prompt and, you know, and iterate with, uh, with an AI. Understand its capabilities, understand its nuances. Now with respect to ethics, um, uh, there's a, there's a, a, that conversation is, in, is incredibly broad. Uh, it includes everything from, from uh, social matters, bias and such, uh, hallucination or fake uh, information, all the way to uh, things that are, that are right in our face uh, uh, with respect to the functionality of the products. Remember, AI is likely to be infused into just about almost all products, from medical imaging products, um, could be of course transportation products, uh, manufacturing manipulators, um, you know, so on and so forth, okay? And so, social websites, um, e-tail stores, uh, music, music streaming services, the list of AI applications is really large. And in each one of them, uh, the industry has to take very good care to make sure that it complies with um, the product promise, keeps the product safe. And each one of the industries, whether it's uh, the USDA or the FAA or, the, or NHTSA or you know, all of the different agencies, needs to engage AI to make sure that new policies are put in place uh, or policies need to be enhanced to, be, to consider uh, the capability and the, and the potential of AI in each one of their product, in each one of their, their industries. Uh, keep keep society safe, and so there's their ethics has a large social to product safety, um, product functionality uh, spectrum, and that you could you could spend um, you know a, a whole career to research, and and I hope many of, many of you do. So we have time for one more brief question. This is OSU, so I cannot not ask a robotics question. So let me ask one of those general. Purpose, uh, you know the last question. The pressure is always so high. <laughs> leave us, right, leave us wanting more. Uh, last question. Let's lean in. So you got to, you got to end it on a good note, Ed. There have been multiple attempts to commercialize general purpose robots. You, Nvidia, has recently announced a major thrust into humanoid robotics. Um, why, why did you do that? And what's your vision for humanoids over the next decade or so? Uh, let, let me maybe maybe answer it with the aha moment, uh, and the, it's a aha moment for me. And you know I love aha moments. Uh, the aha moment for uh, for deep learning for machine learning was when we realized that um, we can learn the patterns and relationships of uh, raw data of almost any kind. You know it could be images, it could be words, it could be speech, it could be um, you know, videos, it could be, right, whatever it is. Uh, to the point where the aha moment was, if you could learn that, why can't you learn the meaning to recognize uh, the patterns of amino acids and um, uh, to uh, infer from that uh, the protein structures? To the point where you might even say, if I understood the protein structures, why can't I, if I just had that, that, that data, why can't I learn and um, uh, infer from it the function of that protein? And so, so that, was a, that was a very important aha moment. Another aha moment was, was um, if you could, if you could uh, uh, recognize speech and understand speech, not just recognize it, but understand its meaning, recognize video that it's, that it's, you know, it's a person, but understand its, uh, its meaning, its uh, person running. If you can understand uh, recognize something and also understand it, then why can't you recognize motion and understand the notion of motion? And if you could translate things, you know, text to image, image to text, so on and so forth, text to protein, you know, so on and so forth, amino acid to protein, so on and so forth. If you could translate from French to English, from text to images, because the computer doesn't know the difference between French to English and text to images. They're just numbers to numbers. 
if if that is true, then why can't why can't a computer uh, also go from move the cup to literally articulate the limbs to move the cup? Because the articulation of the limb is just a whole bunch of numbers as well. We just have to understand, the, take the basic motion of things and um, tokenize it, if you will, represent it, um, uh, represent it in numbers. And so that, that's, that's a bit of an aha moment, that sound, articulation, video, articulation, uh, those are quite similar concepts and, and if a computer can learn one, why can't it learn the other? And, and so I think when, when the world got to the point where generative AI came along, and these large language models uh, made it so e so much easier uh, to train models that are multimodality, that are cross modality. Uh, it became became um, uh, it became quite exciting, uh, and we realized that maybe we can generalize robotics now, just as we can generalize language, we can generalize image generation, we can generalize video, video generation. Why can't we generalize um, robotic articulation? And so that, that final leap, I think, wasn't that far. And it uh, really, really uh, uh, inspired the whole robotics industry. And now, now you're seeing uh, robotics, uh, ro robotics innovation coming out of just about everywhere. NVIDIA, long associated with cutting edge graphics for gamers, is now a major power player in the data center and cloud computing arena. Their GPUs, once designed for rendering lifelike visuals, have become the beating heart of modern data centers, driving the explosion of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Cloud providers, recognizing the immense potential of AI, have turned to NVIDIA's GPUs to power their AI infrastructure. This has led to a surge in demand for their data center GPUs, fueling NVIDIA's rapid growth in this sector. NVIDIA GPUs aren't just training complex AI models to recognize images, understand language, and even drive cars. They're also incredibly efficient at running these models in real time for applications like personalized recommendations and real-time translations. Beyond AI, NVIDIA GPUs are powering demanding scientific simulations, financial models, and massive data analysis tasks. But NVIDIA's data center dominance goes beyond GPUs. They offer a complete ecosystem of software, platforms, and systems specifically designed to accelerate AI and high-performance computing in the cloud. This includes everything from pre-configured AI supercomputers to software suites for developing and managing AI applications, and even high-speed networking solutions to optimize data flow within the data center. The demand for AI and cloud computing is only accelerating. As businesses across every industry adopt AI-powered solutions, the need for powerful computing infrastructure will continue to grow. With its strong foothold in the data center GPU market, NVIDIA is perfectly positioned to capitalize on this trend. Analysts predict that NVIDIA's data center business will be a major engine of growth for the company for years to come. As AI evolves and new applications emerge, NVIDIA's GPUs will be at the center of it all, powering the AI cloud and driving innovation across industries. NVIDIA's data center dominance is a testament to their technological prowess and strategic vision, making them a key player in the digital transformation and a company to watch in the years ahead.